Reed Sorensen was sitting third in the 2011 NASCAR Nationwide Series point standings until he was oddly released from his contract with Turner Scott Motorsports with five races to go. Sorensen, desperate to find a ride to finish 2011 on a high note, secured a ride with a lesser-funded team in McDonald Motorsports, and while the last five races were a struggle for Sorensen, he managed to stay in the top five in points. So join me as we're here to tell the story of the Reed Sorensen, Turner Scott, McDonald Motorsports debacle. Following a 7th place finish at Dover, it was announced on October 4, 2011, Reed Sorensen was being released from Turner Scott Motorsports, just five races left in the 2011 NASCAR Nationwide Series season. Sorensen at the time was sitting third in points, 27 points behind second place Elliott Sadler, and only 49 points outside of first place Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Sorensen had run the number 30 Rexall Toyota and the number 32 Dollar General Toyota in 2011 and having a very solid season, scoring seven top fives, 18 top tens, and his first nationwide win in over four years at Road America. The main reason why Sorensen was released was never made public, although the biggest speculation as to why Sorensen was released was because Dollar General was leaving Turner Scott at the end of 2011 and would be moving to Joe Gibbs Racing and Kyle Busch Motorsports in 2012 and making the 32 team shutting down following 2011. Turner Scott would later announce that Brian Vickers, Ron Hornaday Jr., and future Turner Scott Motorsports prospect James Busher would be taking over the driving duties in the 32 car for the remaining five races of 2011. With Kansas Speedway the next race and being only four days away, Sorensen was desperate to find a ride to try to stay in the top five in points and be able to attend the nationwide driver's banquet at the end of the year. However, with the season being close to its end and having no sponsorship behind him, it was nearly impossible for Sorensen to find a winning ride in the series. Just one day before the Kansas race, a late entry showed up on the entry list. The number 82 for McDonald Motorsports was listed, and it was announced later that day that Reed Sorensen would be the driver. In the press release, it would also state that Sorensen would drive the 82 for the remainder of 2011 in hopes of keeping his top five spot in the points alive. Despite the opportunity, Kansas was a struggle as the car that Sorensen was driving wasn't planned to run Kansas. It was actually the same car that Scott Wimmer had started and parked at the previous nationwide race at Dover and wasn't set up to run Kansas at all. It had planned to be the backup car for the McDonald Motorsports' primary team, the 81 of Blake Cook. And with the 82 only attempting four previous races in 2011, the car had little to no owner points to fall back on. It was up to Sorensen to get the car in the show on time. With the setup not being perfect, Sorensen struggled for speed and practice, barely cracking the top 30, complaining of the car bottoming out and hitting the splitter. The 82 team sat out the second practice in order to get a better setup in the car for qualifying in the race itself. Sorensen managed a clean qualifying lap, solidly locking the 82 car into the race, qualifying 24. However, the race was still a struggle for Sorensen. Despite the changes the team made from practice, the car was still hitting the splitter hard on the left side, which hurt the 82 for speed all day. Sorensen did run as high as 19th at one point, but with the lack of sponsorship on the 82 car, it hurt them for a tire budget, and unfortunately, Sorensen faded late in the race, finishing 26th, right behind his teammate, the 81 of Blake Cook. Despite the Kansas struggles, Sorensen managed to stay third in points, but only 10 points ahead of fourth place Eric Amarola. After Kansas, McDonald was able to secure sponsorship from Crusader staffing and Think Pink Zeta and Tau Alpha for Sorensen's 82 car, allowing the team to have a full allotment of tires for the Charlotte race. Having time to actually set up the car and make the proper adjustments, the 82 of Sorensen showed way more speed practicing inside the top 20 and qualifying a very solidly 15, only six spots behind his old ride, the number 32. Despite the lower tier equipment, Sorensen was running with the front runners and even battled his old 32 ride for position at one point. Unfortunately, while running 18th on lap 42, Sorensen lost fuel pressure and coasted to a stop in turn two. The 82 car was pushed back to the garage where the team went to work managing to get Sorensen back out on track 56 laps down. Through some more attrition, Sorensen climbed from 36th to finish 32nd. Despite the effort to get Sorensen back out, Sorensen fell from 3rd to 5th in the points, but still held the 57-point gap to Jason Leffler, who was sitting 6th in points. 
McDonald Motorsports is able to secure more sponsorship for the 82 for the remaining three races of 2011 from Fomatex and Bulletliner. Texas was another strong showing for Sorensen as he practiced inside the top 25 and qualified a solid 22nd. Ironically, right next to his old 32 ride, who was starting 21st. Sorensen and the 82 team ran their best race of their sh short tenure, running inside the top 20 the entire race, as a late caution unfortunately trapped Sorensen minus one lap down and wasn't able to climb any higher, but still solid, finished 16th place. Sorensen's great run still wasn't enough to pass anyone in the points, but he was still only four points out of third and fourth place, Al Geyer and Almarola. Hopes were high coming into Phoenix as Sorensen still being so close to third and fourth place and the fact that McDonald's short track setup would hopefully give the team more speed in hopes for a top 15 or even a surprising top 10 finish. Surprisingly though, practice didn't show the speed that Sorensen had expected as the 82 was not in the top 25 and only qualified 23rd on the grid. Hopes for a good run were quickly diminished as Sorensen was involved in an eight car pile up on lap one. Look at this, three wide, coming up into turn three, and look what happens, we have contact in turn three as well. The 11 of Brian Scott, the 7 of Danica Patrick. The 82 is also involved in that, that is Reed Sorensen. A log jam with four cars there. See right through the dog leg, I'm surprised they didn't crash there. Yeah. In turn three, man, that's just a tricky, tricky corner right now. Yeah. While the car wasn't badly damaged, the nose was still hurt pretty good on the front, and air on the car was pretty much killed, killing any chances also of a good finish. Adding insult to injury, just 33 laps later, Sorensen, who was running 27th, one lap down, was in the middle of turns one and two, when the right front tire unfortunately blew, sending the 82 of Sorensen hard into the wall. Trouble. Reed Sorensen into the wall. That looked like maybe a right front tire went down right there. Our second caution yeah, of the day. The there. Reed has been a part of both of them. That's a hard lick, too. Get another angle here. Ouch. Thank goodness for safer barriers. And now we've got a bit of a fire. Come on, Reed. Let's. Uh, it might be time to exit. Get, get a little quicker getting out of that thing. Safety truck's having a hard time getting across the track because we saw uh, cars going in front of them. This blue tire, we, uh, that's the second blown tire I've had this week with the same car. The first time we had some type of shock rub. And I think there we just overheated the bead. Um, I was losing brake pedals, so I was lifting about 10 car lengths early and it just wasn't enough. I don't know if we didn't have enough opening on the front or what the deal was, but just overheated it and melted the bead and I was just long for the ride. Coming to a stop with the car bursting into flames, Sorensen quickly hopped out of the car, very distraught and frustrated. The 82 of Sorensen was credited with a 36th place finish, putting him farther behind the car's third and fourth in the points. However, the one positive that Sorensen took out of Phoenix was that he had accumulated enough points that he was guaranteed a top five spot in the points and a spot at the end of year banquet. Coming into the last race at Homestead, Sorensen was only 16 points behind fourth place Eric Amarola, but it'd be a tough challenge as Sorensen was not going to outrun the 88 on sheer pace. Also, with McDonald Motorsports, Sorensen's teammate, the number 81 of Blake Koch, was in a tight battle with the number 15 of Timmy Hill for the Rookie of the Year award. So, being locked into the top five, the main focus for McDonald Motorsports this weekend was the 81 car, and just to get the 82 of Sorensen to the checkered flag. The speed showed as the 81 car of Coke was faster than the 82 of Sorensen in both the practice and qualifying sessions, with the 81 starting 18th and the 82 starting 23rd on the grid. The race itself was a little different as the 82 was running ahead of the 81 despite the 81 of Coke needing to finish ahead. Sorensen was running well just inside the top 25 for most of the race. Unfortunately, things would go from bad to worse as with 18 laps to go, Sorensen, while running 23rd, blew a right rear tire and spun out in turn two. Goal is to win this race. Problem is, is that we got a spin, as that is the 82 of Reed Sorensen, as he has turned it around. Still green. Still green. Still green. See if he can get it yeah, refired. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. now the caution comes out. So when Reed stalled it and could not get it refired, and everybody was starting to come around again, NASCAR throws the caution for the eighth time. 
and it gives us a chance to talk about Reed Sorensen. Got a flag, got to come in this time. I don't think I can make it back around. Let's go back and show you what happened. Yeah, that has all the makings of a right rear tire going flat there in the center of the corner. Yeah, it looked like it was low. He just struggling trying to save it. He's got damage on that right side. He was 23rd, one lap down. Remember when he was third in the championship hunt and was unceremoniously discharged from Turner Motorsports? Hooked on with this 82 team and finish out the year. He's hanging on to the top five position in points. And he will keep that uh, number five position no matter what happens tonight. He's got about a 35 point margin over Jason Leffler. A good run was gone as the crew taped the car back together and Sorensen managed to limp the car the final 18 laps across the line, finishing his season in 25th, while his teammate, the 81 of Hope, finished 22nd. Coming out of Homestead, Reed Sorensen would finish fifth in the points, finishing 160 points behind champion Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Despite the lower tier equipment, Sorensen was extremely thankful on the radio, thanking everyone on the team after the race and attended the 2011 Nationwide Series Championship Banquet. NASCAR Nationwide Series. Fifth place. Reed Sorensen. Coming to the check, and real good work again. Good job, guys. Winning Road America was a big deal for us. NASCAR has made the call for Reed Sorensen to go to victory lane. Yeah, buddy. Good job, man. I worked out great. That was somewhere we didn't really expect to, to have a shot to win, and you know we just had a good day, and everything fell our way. Please welcome driver of the number 82 McDonald Motorsports Dodge from Peachtree City, Georgia, Reed Sorensen. Nice shot. Thank you. Congratulations. Hey, thank you. Comfy? I'm very comfy. All right, good. We'll fire questions at you then. I tell you. The win at Road America, how, how big was that for you? It was a, it was a very exciting win. Uh, that's a, a place that really didn't expect to win. We were just going to try to salvage as many points as we could get. And uh, end of the race there, at, you know, a couple green-white checkers, and we were sitting there uh, to win. I have to tell you, I was very impressed with what you were able to do this year. I mean, you, when I mentioned earlier, the roller coaster, as far as how this season went for you, uh, started off with Turner Motorsports. You were in the top five in the points, top three, I believe. Uh, was let go, and then you didn't quit. I mean, there was no give up. You were able to work with Randy McDonald Motorsports, and you stayed in the top five. I mean, how difficult was that for you? Well, I just, you know, I wanted to make sure I was here at the end of the year, and, uh, you know, we worked really hard all season to, to compete for the championship, and, uh, you know, all the guys worked hard on the team and had a great sponsor all year and enabled us to do that. And uh, we still had a shot at it, but unfortunately, uh, circumstances didn't work out, but uh, McDonald Motorsports was there to, to help me finish the year and um, help with him and friends and family and able to be here and, and at least finish fifth. When the chips were down, you didn't fold, and I think it's an achievement that should definitely uh, you should be very proud of. We look forward to seeing you work hard back on the track in 2012. Congratulations, fifth place in the NASCAR Nationwide Series. Reed Sorensen. We'll be back with more from the 2011 NASCAR Nationwide Series and NASCAR Camping World Truck Series Awards Banquet from the Lowe's Miami Beach Hotel. The 2011 season was an interesting one for Reed Sorensen, from the highest of highs to the lowest of lows, but still salvaging a solid points finish. While this story as a whole isn't remembered by most fans, the ones who do still remember this are likely still confused as to why DeSorensen was released. We are still awaiting that answer to this day.